Hi everyone, I'm Joe Rosh, and this video is about how we can fix some Unreal cloth issues when we're rendering out of Unreal. First, let's see what the problem is. You can see here, our cloth is going crazy. It's doing that because I'm using temporal samples. Epic put out a video explaining the benefits of temporal samples and how it creates the best motion blur in Unreal. So I want to use temporal samples in the movie render queue, but I need to stop the cloth from this behavior. In my case, I totally crank the temporal samples all the way to 60. If you look at the cloth, you can see it jumping around. It looks like when my character pops into position for the next frame, the cloth is simulating that jump in position. This jump is happening because the shutter in our camera closes every frame, so when it opens up again, the character is in a slightly different position, but the cloth isn't taking that into consideration. It's just simulating as it's rendering. So what I'm going to do to fix this is simulate it in Houdini, and then bring it back into Unreal. So let's get started. Inside of Unreal, I'm going to find the skeletal mesh. Right click and go to Asset Actions and Export. This will export out the skeleton and mesh as an FBX file. Nothing special in the export settings. I usually turn off exporting vertex colors, LODs, collision meshes. We don't really need that for what we're doing. When we export the skeletal mesh, it won't include the simmed cloth, so we need to convert it to a static mesh, and then when we export that, we'll get the cloth. So double click on the skeletal mesh and select Make Static Mesh. That'll put it into a meshes directory inside our project, so we have to navigate to that directory and then export that static mesh out as an FBX. The last thing we'll export is the animation. I'll click on the Animation tab and then search for Recall. All the Paragon characters have some sort of flourish under that name, and Quang here has two of them. I like Recall, Sword, and World, so I'm going to export that one. We're done here in Unreal for now. On to Houdini. I'll do a very quick primer for cloth sims in Houdini in case someone here hasn't done any of that before. First, I'll drop down a grid and then a node called Vellum Configure Cloth. After that, I'll bring in a Vellum Solver node. We can see it fall when I hit play, but we need something for it to collide against. I'll make a sphere and connect it to the third input, and we should be good. If we hit play, you can see how the cloth will collide with the sphere. I'm just going to drop down a remesh node, which will create more triangles on the mesh and that'll create nicer deformation when it falls and collides. Now the way we're going to get this into Unreal is to use a labs tool. Labs is side effects testing ground for tools that target common workflows and integrations with other software. These tools are available for free. To install them, you go to the shelves and open the side effects lab shelf. Then click on the joystick icon to download the latest release, and then restart Houdini to have access to those tools. The tool we're going to use is the Labs Skinning Converter. This will automatically create bones and skin the mesh. Then the bones will follow the geometry. It's easier to show it than explain, so here I'm scattering 100 bones on this mesh, and then writing it out to an FBX file. If I bring the FBX file back into Houdini, you can see how the bones are now driving the simulation of the cloth. Now, this is just a skeletal mesh, just like any other skeletal mesh inside of Unreal. So now I'm importing the cloth into Unreal, and we can see the animation is exactly what we had inside of Houdini. So now the theory is done. Let's look at this in practice. Let's get our skirt working. First, I'm dropping down an FBX character import and connecting it to the skeletal mesh I imported from Unreal. This will bring in the geometry, the skeleton in its rest position, and the third output will have the animated skeleton. But in this case, there is no animation on this file. Houdini has an FBX animation import, so here I'm loading in the animation from Unreal. I'm just coloring the input nodes yellow for clarity. To see the animation being applied to the skeletal mesh, I'm attaching a bone deform node.
Houdini adds a default material, so I'm dropping down an attribute delete node and deleting the shop material path attribute on the geometry. This is an optional step. I just don't like how it looks in the viewport, and Unreal won't need this attribute, so there's no harm in getting rid of it. I need to import the static mesh that contained the skirt, so I'm using an FBX skin import to do this. It brings it in as packed geometry, so I need to drop down an unpack node to have access to the polygons and points. I'm making another attribute delete node just to get rid of the auto material that Houdini is hiding, like I just did in the other node. Next, I only want to have the skirt from this geometry. I'm dropping down a blast node, which allows me to delete geometry. I'm going to the selection tool, and I'm turning on the select groups option. This lets me select geometry based on different criteria, like if the geometry is connected or if it has the same attribute. Since this FBX file came from Unreal and it had materials applied to it, it has an FBX material name attribute on the polygons. I can use this as a filter to select just the skirt. I'm choosing the material that was attached to the skirt, which deletes it. But then I can choose to invert that selection so only the skirt remains. The skirt is supposed to have a cut down the side of it, but the positioning of it is all intersected. This is a pain, but I should separate this before I do any simulations. This next part of the video I'm going to speed up since it's a lot of me fumbling around trying to get this right. I ended up using a soft transform, some sculpting, and a smooth node to smooth out the skirt. The problem is that when I smooth it out, it's changing the entire skirt, which isn't what I want. So I'm going to use an attribute VOP to mix between the original skirt and the smoothed one. I'm grabbing the position from the first input, which is the original skirt, and I'm importing the position of the second skirt with an import points attribute node. And then I can use a mix node to blend between the two. If you're more familiar with Unreal, this is like using a lerp blueprint node. Now I'll jump out and drop an attribute paint node to specify where I want the blending to be. By default, this creates an attribute called mask. Now I'll drop down an attribute blur node and set it to blur the mask attribute. In the attribute VOP, I can use a bind node, which allows me to use attributes on the geometry. I just have to type in the name of the attribute I want to use. So I just have to type the word mask, and now it's using that attribute to control how much blending is happening per point. Now I'm done that part. I'm dropping a backdrop just to help keep things organized. One last bit of cleanup is using the attribute delete node to delete the mask attribute I just painted, since I don't need it anymore. The next issue I'm going to have is that the skirt is double-sided. I've noticed that if I sim cloth that's double-sided, it often takes longer to simulate, it self-collides a lot, and it often seems too stiff. So I'm dropping down an attribute wrangle node, and I'm just going to use some simple code to save its position. All I'm doing is I'm making a new attribute called OG for original and P for position. So OGP, and I'm saying that's equal to the skirt's current position. I'm just doing this to store the skirt's current positions. Now I'm going to use another labs tool for visualizing UVs. Let's take a quick look at a simple example. I'm just going to drop down a pig head. And if you look at its UVs here, you'll see how they're all divided into these separate islands. What this node can do is, if you check this box, you can actually take your geometry and have it move into the same position that the UVs are in. Now, going back to the skirt, I've checked out the UVs on this skirt, and it has two UV islands, one for the front of the skirt and another for the inside faces. So I'm going to use that tool to convert the position of the geometry of the skirt to its UVs locations. This is going to make it very easy for me to delete the inside faces of the skirt. But now I have to put it back the way it was. So now I can drop down an attribute wrangle node and I'm going to reverse the expression I used before. Now I'm saying that the position of the points should be equal to the attribute OGP, which is where I saved them before. 
and this will pop the points back to their original position. Now I'm dropping down a facet node to make some normals to make the viewport shading a bit nicer. This is an optional step. Now I'm making a backdrop to keep things organized. So now the issue is that the skirt is in the original position of the static mesh, but I need to get it into the position of the first frame of the animation when he's in his battle stance. So I can use a blend shape node to gently blend from the rest position of the skeletal mesh to the animated mesh's first frame. I do need to freeze the position of the animation so the animation doesn't play as I'm doing this. So I'm dropping down a time shift node and I'm removing the expression that's on it so the animation doesn't play. It's frozen on the first frame. The sword is going to act strange as it blends from one position to the next. So I'm going to filter my selections by the FBX material name, and I'm deleting it with a blast node. So now I can set up a simulation. I'm dropping down a vellum configure cloth to add the proper constraints so that the geo will behave like cloth. To make sure the geometry sticks to the character and doesn't just fall to the ground, I'm making a vellum attached to geometry. This node will automatically make all the geometry stick onto the incoming geometry in the third input. I'm going to change the group type to points, and then I'm selecting the points that I want to be stuck to the moving man. I'm changing the selection type to lasso in order to make the selection process easier. Now I just need to drop down a vellum solver and solve about 100 frames. When the cloth settles down, I'm dropping down a stash node. This node will save the geometry into the project file. So if I close down Houdini, I won't need to resolve anything at the expense of having a much larger hip file. I'm renaming the node to the frame that I froze it on. Now that the skirt is in the correct position, I can basically repeat the last steps I just did. I could just copy and paste these simulation nodes. All the settings are exactly the same. And I'm just connecting the moving geometry from the bone deform node. Now I'm simulating the skirt from the animated mesh. Now that my skirt is animated the way I like, I want the original mesh to be moving the same way. The mesh that had the front and back faces. So now I can use a point of form and connect the three inputs. The first input is going to be the geometry that I want to move, that I want animated. So I'm going back all the way before I deleted the inside faces, back to the original undeleted geometry. Then I connect the geometry in its rest position. Then the third input will be the moving animated geometry. So now I have my original skirt moving the way I want. I can connect a merge node and just see how it looks with the original skeletal mesh. Now I need to export this into Unreal. So I'm going to use the labs tool, the labs skinning converter. This does all the work. I'm just going to keep everything at the default parameters and write it out with an FBX character output node. At this point, you could also output an Alembic file and bring that into Unreal. If I want to see how it works, I can make an FBX character input and copy the path I just used to save it out to bring it back in. Then a bone deform node will show me how the skeleton moves. The way the cloth is moving now is the way it will move when I import it into Unreal. Back in Unreal, I'm setting up my skeletal mesh. I'm making a material that will be invisible, and I'm going to apply it to the skirt. Once I'm inside the material, if I hit 1 on the keyboard, it'll create a scalar parameter that I can connect. On the material, if I click on it, uh, I can change it to a masked material and then I can plug in that parameter into the opacity mask input. I'm also going to change the lighting mode to unlit, so hopefully it'll process faster. Now I'll apply this material to the original skirt. I could have also imported the skeletal mesh without the skirt back into Unreal, but this is faster and easier. 
Now I'm making a level sequence, bringing in my skeletal mesh and applying the animation to it. I'm finding my skirt skeletal mesh from Houdini and I'm bringing that into Unreal, making sure that import animation is turned on in the FBX import options menu. I need to make sure it's in the same position as the character, so I'm copying the character's transforms and pasting them to the skirt's transforms. Next, I bring the skirt into the level sequence and apply the animation to it. Once that's done, I'm going to find the original material and apply it. The skirt that I imported should have the original name still attached, so I just need to reapply the original material. Ultimately, I did end up doing the final lighting in Unreal 5. I just imported the project into Unreal 5 and I had to double check all the lighting settings were set up to use Lumen. The Alembic file works fine. I'm not going to bother showing the setup for it in Unreal, since there are several other tutorials that do that online. If I'm using Unreal, I'd recommend sticking with the FBX files if you can. Alembics feel like second-class citizens in Unreal. Here's another shot I used using the same techniques. And this is another shot, this time using Vellum soft bodies to get the tentacles flying around. If I made any mistakes, please let me know in the comments. I wouldn't want to spread any bad information. I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and if you're still watching until the very end, thanks. A like and subscribe is appreciated.